There's something truly wonderful about long train journeys. There's this sense of childhood nostalgia, a real life version of the train sets you used to play with as a kid, and it genuinely feels like you're going on an adventure. I'm not by any means a train enthusiast, but I am a train journey enthusiast, and we had a 13 hour one ahead of us. We'd be travelling through the night, leaving the dense and mountainous jungles of northern Thailand and heading right down to the country's beating heart, Bangkok. And before we knew it, we were off. The concrete and the cars slowly disappeared, swallowed whole by jungle and glorious sunset. I could never get bored of this. The window was like our very own TV set, showing us mountains carpeted in rainforest and all sorts of incredible views and scenery. We went to 7-Eleven beforehand and I bought loads of junk food. Got some noodles, got a big tub of noodles, so I suppose that's the least junky food. Brownie. M&M's. Lots of strawberry milk. Soon it got completely dark and the guard came round to assemble the bunk bed. It was really cool to watch how efficiently everything folded out and slotted into place. There was even a small ladder to help me climb into the top bunk. So it's about half ten. I could try and get some sleep now and fingers crossed wake up when we're just outside Bangkok. It must have been the motion of the train because I slept exceptionally well. So well, in fact, that I didn't wake until 5am when the guard returned to fold back away the bed and we were very nearly there. I don't know what I really expected of Bangkok. It's one of those places that everyone tells you about. They tell you you're gonna hate it on your first visit, whilst others tell you it's gonna be your favorite place anywhere in the world. They tell you it's chaos, crowded, intense, intensely beautiful, and even as we slowed right down on the approach to the station, I could see it was certainly quite something. About half six in the morning, finally made it to Bangkok. By the time we got our bearings and left the station, it was the middle of the morning rush hour. But first, I need to give you some context. The World Health Organization states that Thailand's roads are the second deadliest in the world, second only to war-torn Libya. Their average is 66 deaths every single day from road traffic accidents. That's over 24,000 a year. And as we rode a tuk-tuk to our new hotel, I was really concerned that we were about to contribute to that statistic. I thought we were going to die, Danielle. Yeah. <laughs> Our time in Bangkok was largely characterised by rain. On that first day, once our heart rates were back to normal, we took a boat ride up and down the Chao Freya, the main river that snakes through the city. Until then, I don't think I'd quite realised just how big Bangkok is, and the two or three days that we had here would be wholly inadequate. The boat ride really emphasised the divide between the rich and poor here. There were incredible glass skyscrapers and futuristic super yachts and yet shacks beside the river made out of corrugated iron and buildings that looked as though they were ready to simply collapse into the water. As we got off the boat, there were even locals fishing in the tiny cracks between the piers. I was beginning to see why everyone has so much to say about this city. It really was chaotic and intense, but undeniably charming at the same time.
In the evening, the rain held off for a brief period, giving us a chance to explore the notorious Kaosan Road. This street is said to be the centre of the world for backpackers, full of bars, clubs, street vendors and everything in between. They sell all sorts of creepy crawly cuisine, they offer all manner of massages, and it's where you'll find some of the city's more infamous evening entertainment. The evening ended in true Bangkok fashion, with a tropical lightning storm. Our final day was once again a very wet one, and Danielle didn't bring a coat, so we had to share mine. We were visiting Wat Pho, an elaborate complex of Buddhist temples famed for its gigantic reclining Buddha. I'd first learned about this place from the Leonardo DiCaprio movie The Beach, when he visits during the opening sequence, and to be honest, it's all I'd really known of Bangkok before visiting, so I was excited to finally see it. Okay, the thunder. We had to remove our shoes and were given plastic bags to carry them in. And it was magnificent. This footage doesn't at all do it justice, but it's 15 metres tall and 46 metres long, and was built in 1832 by Rama III. Its centre is actually made of brick, with plaster on top to properly shape it, and then gold to finish it off and the end result is stunning. The statue represents Buddha entering Nirvana at the end of all reincarnations. The chapel also houses 108 bronze bowls, which many visitors throw coins in to bring good luck. And that's just about it for our time in Thailand. I'll see you very soon in Hong Kong.